this is uh, my second time going live and I had a little issue, but I am back. What's up, everybody in the chat? Like I said before, I don't believe in trying to tell anybody what to like about themselves because we don't live in their body. Every person has at large has some type of insecurity. Um, and if they want to fix something, it's their right. Me personally, like I said, plastic surgery is dangerous. Sometimes there are doctors that will tell you what they won't do because of certain things going on. I feel if you want weight loss surgery, I would just try to do it myself the best I could. And if all else fails, then F it. If I can afford the lipo, if I really want it, I'll get it. But it is dangerous. And like I said earlier, um, a lot of people dying, a lot of women dying overseas, getting surgeries is more and more common because the prices are cheaper. I just kept wondering, why do we hear so much of this happening overseas? Is it, again, they're not being educated properly because it's a poorer nation? And I mean, what is going on here? Now, there are thousands of other cases where they don't die after getting surgery or have complications complications and everything like that. Um, now, in the chat, let's see, Level Up Channel says they want the attention so bad from men they're willing to die for it. I, sometimes you don't always get surgery just for men. It's, you have your own issues you battle with. Maybe there's just certain things you just can't stand that tears you up, just like when girls turn anorexic and have body dysmorphia and stuff. It's, you know, to to us, they might look normal. To them, they see a really big person and they go crazy. And again, you know, sometimes it's too much for a person. Certain things that they just want to change and they're, they're not happy about it. And they do something about it, you know. And I'm not against that. If you want to change something, you can do that. The best thing is to try to do it naturally if you can. And, um, you know. Or sometimes the women do lose weight, but they have a lot of loose skin. They also go plastic surgery. It just isn't nose jobs and BBLs and lipo. Sometimes the titties are so big, the women want to get smaller or breast reduction. That's, plat that's surgery. Sometimes um, they have the loose skin. They don't like how that looks, so they have to go under the knife and have that all chopped off. Tummy tucks, lifts, breast lifts after having kids, breastfeeding for years. Women get breast lifts to lift their titties back up. Um, maybe the, you're, you're, you're really big up top on the sides. They get surge surgery to fix that. Um, leg surgery, uh, dental work, all types of stuff. It's all types of surgeries and some things you can sort of do on yourself and some things you can't, but it's up to the person what they want, but you have to be aware of the risk involved. You know, you have to be aware of the risk. It is kind of scary. You know, so I want to share these two stories that um, didn't get much media attention. This happened recently. You know, oh, give me a second. I'm going to share this now again. The first woman, the most recent, and these are still recent. This woman is from Mississippi, from the South. And she died from weight loss surgery in Mexico. A lot of these deaths are coming out of Mexico and Dominican Republic and stuff. So she says she took the trip. Um, she took the trip to Mexico to save money for weight loss surgery. And it led to the death of her. She's a mother of three. She suffered complications during the procedure. I have heard horror stories of the anesthesia not being properly given and people waking up during surgery and they cannot scream and they can feel the knives and everything pulling on them. I mean, they said it's agonizing. And um, my goodness gracious. 
I don't know what else be going on. Like for me as a diabetic, I heal slower. So for me getting surgery is more dangerous because my my cuts wouldn't heal as fast. You know, it can be a problem. So, you know, I have to be weary of that if I were to ever consider anything. Okay. This mother, she's from California. She died and two others are in the hospital after getting plastic surgery, all from the same doctor in Tijuana, Mexico. All right. It says after after undergoing the procedure in January, one woman died. Another was hospitalized for two weeks and the third woman continues to suffer from kidney failure. No, I'm not against surgery, Sunrise. I said that earlier. But some people are. I feel like, like again, I'm not against telling anybody what they should and shouldn't like. I know people have them videos. Oh, you just got to love yourself. At the end of the day, some people don't like. You don't have to like anything. If you don't want to, it's your body. It's your face. It's whatever. You know, it's great to accept what you want. But no one can go through the mind of a person obsessed or really unhappy. You know, I mean, we all can relate because, like I said, everybody has had something maybe they didn't like. And um, again, I'm not trying to make this into a racial thing, but I know for a fact black women are the least likely to get plastic surgery for a lot of reasons. But a good portion don't. I hated how society, well, the black community continues to shame black women who have died getting butt lift surgeries, the, the Brazilian butt lifts and stuff, when they feel the pressure from their so-called community to get this done because, you know, black men made the Coke bottle body so popular that people believe and expect us to have that, to have that kind of body if we're black. And when we don't live up to that, it can take a toll on some women who, who might not get attention from men or they're just not, when they look in the mirror, they're not happy with what they see. They don't feel like a real black woman or they don't feel sexy enough or good enough because that has become the standard body shape in the black community. And they know damn well, we are not all shaped like hourglass figures. You know, some women are really skinny. Sierra made being more slim a little bit more popular. Sometimes you're not slim or a Coke bottle. Sometimes you are maybe a little chunky or in the middle. You know, that's why I never diss other ethnicities' bodies. I've seen that happen a lot online. I don't do that at all because I just think it's mean, number one. And also, a lot of Black women, we don't all have the same body shape. Some of us are not happy, you know. Working out is the best option and doing a diet. And for some, it's just too hard or some just don't want to. They can afford the, the lipo and they try to go get it. And as we can see, one of them wanted to cut costs and ended up losing her life behind it. You know? So, I do have to say, Ariana, from my experience with Men Not Black, they think our butts, even if it's not big, is big. It's a lot of black men that might dish you if your butt ain't that big. But to another race of guy, because their women might not have as big a butts, it's pretty normal. So you just have a normal butt to them. They, they don't really go nuts over it all the time. Some of them might expect you to have a big old butt because you're black. But that's because, you know, you know who made that very popular. But no, we are all different. And that needs to be accepted more. But I can totally get the pressure that some black women feel, you know? So again, I, I looked up, well, what are some of the top places for these surgeries that people travel to go get? The countries, I already had heard that, um, you know, Brazil was the top country. But you have Brazil, Japan. Again, I have seen the before and afters of those women in Japan, incredible. I mean, incredible. Italy and Mexico are the top international destinations of choice for cosmetic surgery, with Russia, India, Turkey, Germany, and France rounding out the top 10. 
according to the International Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. Marie Baker says, I'm getting my stuff done in the United States. Yes, the, this country has the top doctors. The only problem is, is that it's so expensive. You know, but I see a lot of people doing it. I always wonder where do all these, these men that's transitioning, they're getting all this surgery. I'm like, where, I wonder where they're getting all this money from to pay for these sex changes. And I said, maybe they got some sugar daddies or something. I don't know. So now what I'm going to do again, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the stories again. So I won't be able to see what you're saying in the chat right now. All right. Now, this did make People Magazine, the People story. Again, she's from Mississippi. She died after complications from weight loss surgery in Mexico. She's just 34 years old, 34, and a mother of three. And she died from complications during the surgery, the procedure. Again, Marquita from Biloxi, Mississippi, died on May 6th in Tijuana, Mexico, while undergoing the sleeve gastrectomy surgery. I'm sorry if I butchered that. A procedure in which a large percentage of the stomach is removed to limit food consumption. According to the local news outlet, her friend Francesca, who also planned to have surgery but changed her mind, was in touch with her before the procedure. She said, I talked to my, th my friend throughout the entire process. We talked every day. She was asking questions every day in the group. She was very knowledgeable. I asked her how she was doing, and she said she was okay. I was going to talk to her after the surgery around 2 or 3 p.m. Then it says, however, she told the outlet, the news outlet, that uh, the next call she received was from her husband at 5 p.m., saying that Marquita had become unresponsive during surgery and had died. So it says it's the latest example as to why medical tourism or traveling to another country for medical procedures can be dangerous. In January, one woman died and two others were hospitalized in Tijuana while undergoing plastic surgery. In 2019, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued a warning about health dangers that can stem from undergoing plastic surgery in Mexico, which is often cheaper than the United States. The warning came after 11 Americans were left, were left with antibi antibiotic-resistant infections, according to the NBC Los Angeles, Okay, most of which were from weight loss surgeries. Hmm. Antibiotic resistant infections. There are many websites that advertise for these procedures, says Dr. Dennis Orgo, the medical director. Okay. Some surgeons in these countries are excellent, but sometimes it's hard for patients to tell the difference by looking on the internet, he continued. It is that inability to properly vet international services, providers, and regulations that ultimately give rise to a large public health issue. Her family and friends have created a GoFundMe to help support her mother and children and daughter, Serenity and two sons, KJ and Deshaun. The fundraiser has raised more than $8,000. Okay, now, so there is a GoFundMe to help. Now let's look at the other woman who died in January. This also made people. A California woman died and two others were hospitalized after getting surgery, plastic surgery from the same doctor in Tijuana, Mexico. Okay, this is her. 
After getting plastic surgery in Mexico on the same day in January, one woman died and two others were hospitalized. All three procedures took place on January 29th at Art Silhouette Aesthetic Surgery in Tijuana, Mexico, and were performed by Dr. Jesus Manuel Lopez, according to the San Diego Union Tribune. Kiwano Weaver, a 38-year-old mother of two from Long Beach, California, died on the operating table. Her mother, Renee Weaver, told the Daily Newspaper. Although Kiana did tell her family she was having some work done prior to the trip, her mother believed she was going to Florida. She only learned that her daughter had traveled to Mexico after another family member told her of Kiana's death. She says, I'm heartbroken. Heartbroken. I want to know what happened. Kiana was very independent, a good, loving, smart, and very, hold on, smart and very intelligent black woman, she said. I'm mostly sad this happened to my daughter because she was already beautiful to me inside and out. She just couldn't see it. Hold on. What kind of work was she going to get? Uh, I don't know. A health document provided by Kiana's mother listed her cause of death as secondary hypoxic, hold on, hypoxic, you know, I'm not even going to try on that one, a kind of a brain injury caused by oxygen deprivation. Kiana's friend, Kanisha Davis, a nurse, told the newspaper that they both scheduled liposuction and tummy tucks for the same day with the same doctor. Davis recalled being concerned at the time because she was not hooked up to any monitors during surgery, and she was released immediately. Me being a nurse, I knew something was off, she said. After learning that Kiana had died, Davis returned home to California, and she began bleeding internally and projectile vomiting. An emergency room visit turned into a two-week hospital stay where she learned she was hemorrhaging inside. Oh my God. So she learns her friend dies and she starts bleeding and vomiting and she finds out she's hemorrhaging inside. If I hadn't gone into the hospital when I did, I would have died, she said. Did we know we were taking a risk being in Mexico? Yes. But did we ever at any time think the risk would be death? No. Neither doctor nor the clinic responded to multiple requests for comment to the Tribune. The clinic has not responded to people's requests for a comment. When reached out by the outlet, um, they said the doctor is not a member of the organization you know, for plastic surgeons. According to state law, in California, the Mexican state where Tijuana is located, um, only certified plastic surgeons are permitted to perform certain cosmetic procedures, including liposuction and tummy tucks. Authorities told the newspaper they're looking into her death. We're working very hard to make sure doctors who are practicing without proper credentials are immediately shut down and are investigated by the attorney general. So let me show you some other women, too. Another one. Makeup artist mom dies after getting plastic surgery in the Dominican Republic. So it's this travel plastic surgery. I mean, Lord. A New York woman died in the Dominican Republic on Sunday. This happened, I'm guessing from what I just see right here. Yeah, May 25th or maybe a few days before that. But um, wow. Okay. A New York woman died in the Dominican Republic on Sunday from complications of plastic surgery. 
She was 30 years old. She traveled to her native Dominican Republic to get liposuction on her butt and have breast surgery. Okay. She was being treated for a post-operative infection at a hospital at the Dominican Republic where she died in the intensive care unit. Lord. Um. Okay. She went to the Dominican Republic with another woman in early May. She had plastic surgery but didn't have any complications. Okay, and they said she wasn't anemic. Um, she was a nurse herself and a makeup artist and had a three-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so yeah, another one. And then this made people. Okay, now this was 2019, but this does happen every single year. Okay, she died in the Dominican Republic for going for cheap plastic surgery against her family's wishes. Alexandra Medina is the third American woman to die from plastic surgery in the country this month. Okay. I don't think that's the same woman. A New York woman, she died in the Dominican Republic over the holiday weekend to get cheap plastic surgery. She was 33. She wanted to get a tummy tuck and liposuction. After doctors in the United States refused to perform the surgeries, telling her she needed to lose weight before undergoing any procedures. But she was undeterred and, con and contacted a Dominican surgeon through Facebook who agreed to the operation. The doctor was like, no problem. We can do it. We can handle it. We've dealt with bigger women. So come here. We'll do it. And it was obviously cheaper. On Friday, while getting liposuction, Medina died on the operating table at the clinic. It was due to a fatty tissue embolism or a blood clot. She leaves behind a 14-year-old son and a husband. They contacted the doctor for a comment. They said they're opening an investigation into her death. But they feel that this will not help. All right. So. I show that to show this is a widespread thing, you know, dying on the operating table. All right, so let me see some of your comments. undercover just with a name like that you're scaring me what i will say is that yeah a lot of us do have beautiful body parts but guess what we get fat okay when we have kids or if we eat too much and some of us try to lose the weight naturally and sometimes some can't their metabolism ain't good they have genetic issues or they just try and it just don't work so they do what they feel they need to do you know, and how could you say this? Because men get penile implants and all types of stuff. Y'all get stuff too. Maybe not on the same level of, of women, but um, yeah. And it's amazing you would say this. Truly, truly, truly. You know, and it's kind of amazing you would say this because one of the reasons besides the fact maybe they just don't like certain things is because of men as to why women feel the pressure to do all these things to have a better body to to so that we you know can impress you or you will you like what you look you're looking at that's why a lot of women do it you know they might not always have one man in particular they're thinking of when they do it but it's in the mind a little bit, you know, like, oh, I want these titties up, you know, when I'm with my man, you know, I want these titties up, you know, he's looking at the titties. 
and all that other stuff. I mean, it's a whole bunch of different things, but I think you should have something called empathy and compassion, especially knowing as a man, one of the biggest reasons this is happening is for men. Like I said, one minute they say, you got to have a big butt, big butt, big butt. They go get big butt surgeries. How could she? She got to love herself. Yada, yada, yada. But yet everybody's promoting the big butt, big butt, big butt. And now you're shocked that there are women getting surgery trying to get a big butt. Women was complaining about men in the bedroom. What did doctors come up with? Viagra. Why? Because there's a need for it. So, but it is a good thing that you recognize the beauty of the natural woman. You know, I think it's gotten so bad that I've heard of men, they're like, not accepting or when they see natural big titties i've heard of some of them upset because they're not sitting up i'm like what do you think natural big titties look like the titties you're used to seeing on the tv are breast implants they're breast implants that's why they're sitting up perfect you know so i have some questions these are my questions. If anybody wants to call in, the phone line is open. I want to know, are any of you against plastic or cosmetic surgery? It could be a butt lift. It can be lipo. It can be a breast lift. It can be breast implants. It could be a breast reduction. It could be um, a nose job, lip injections, cheek implants, shaving your jaw. Um, Getting dental. I don't think dental workers will know. Not really. That ain't, it's not a big thing. But any kind of work. Have you had a procedure? Would you travel outside of the U.S. for surgery? So let me see these comments in the chat. Yes, people do die also in the U.S. You know. Yes. Hold on for a second, y'all. I am not having no nutcases up on my damn thing. All right, give me a second, y'all. All right. Well, I'm not saying it's just Mexico sunrise. I did show the Dominican Republic as well. You know, this happens all over the world. Yes, Goddess Sweet Pea says, I think people go to Mexico because it's closer. Yes, it is closer and the, the Dominican Republic is closer as well. All right. Let's see. Okay. My first call. Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm all right. How are you? That's good. Huh? Cerebral, right? Yes. Is this cerebral? Yes. Okay, how's it going? I'm okay. Well, I heard your story with uh, the lady. Um, talk up, talk up just a little bit. I can't really hear you. I heard your stories about the ladies in the past. Yes. And I just wanted to say, it, it's a sad thing. It's tragic. But it's, it's just too bad that a lot of these women out here are, are, are doing this stuff. And I know they look at the videos and stuff, but... It's like, if you tell them in real life that you're beautiful, you don't need to do anything, you look good the way you are, they don't believe you. They don't listen to it. Like, when we tell them that. Well, it's a they psychological thing. Just because just cause you tell me that don't mean I think that. Maybe I've been teased throughout my life about something. Or, you know, 
just it's like to me with anorexic women we tell them you are skinny as hell or you're a perfect weight and they look in the mirror and they see someone really big you know everybody has their own issues they're going through and you know I, I don't know I don't I don't tell anybody what they should like or what they shouldn't like because I don't know what they what they're going through mentally I can't convince them you know yeah and I mean they do that's true but Sometimes it's women that their own husbands will tell them. Because I know you said a lot of women to the men, but their own husbands. I met women that I knew were going to get a surgery, and they told me their husbands said they look good, but they just still felt like you said they didn't see themselves as beautiful. But they trying to keep up with what they see on TV. When some of them ain't even really living that life, be living a normal life. So don't look to that. Look to the people that's around you that you supposedly love. No. Yes, that's true, but I don't know. Like, I had something I'm not going to mention that I didn't like, and it didn't matter. It's my own thing. I, you know, I was so it's not even a big deal. But for me, I don't, I don't care what anyone says. It's my own thing, and it's something that you have to deal with yourself. That no one can help you but yourself deal with it. Yeah. You got to get, sometimes, and sometimes you might have to get therapy. Yeah, that's true too. Could be a mental thing going on that you got to deal with. It's causing you to do this, but to me, it's just sad. And I hope our women come back to just being natural. Cause it's like when you see a natural woman, you're almost shocked, especially maybe somebody like, uh, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, right? She came out, it's like things look normal. You know, it's like a shock to see, but for me and a lot of the guys, I know it's refreshing to see that. So, it's, you still see this fakeness on TV, ladies, but don't go for that. Just go for your naturalness to get back to your natural beauty. That's what we really like and love. Well, most black women on average don't get any work done on the average because it costs too much. So, right, that's, okay. that is true. I just hope it's not. I look at a lot of these like, TikTok videos and these things that put all this so much makeup. It's a different to balance, but some of them start to look like, uh, they look like a Halloween house. It's like, what are you doing? You're going way too far. Now it's working against you. It's like less is more. I could hopefully come back to moderation. Well, you know, I love the 90s look. I think that's when we looked our best. The yeah. 90s was. What do you think? Yeah, the 90s looked nice. I liked it because it didn't seem like it was too over the top. And yet it was still enough to make you look at it. Like, okay, I see what's going on. You know, but it wasn't like, I don't know if that's a dude or if what. It's too on food. Who is that? That was me snipes under there. Like, you don't know. But yeah, that look then, yeah, I could go for that all day. I like the 90s look. That's what I go for, like... If I get ready, I think of Aaliyah or something when I do my makeup and stuff. Like, I don't want it overboard, but I still, you know, want to look spruced up. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Okay, I'm calling someone back. 678 number. Hello? Hello? Man, I should pull up some pictures. Like the 90s, the makeup was on point. Like Naomi Campbell, Tyra, the R&B singers. Like they wore makeup, but it looked good. It was like a natural look, but you could still see it, but it just wasn't extreme. But And it was perfect. The eyeshadows was perfect. It just was beautiful, a lot of it, you know? And, you know, you had T-Boz and everybody and Left Eye. Like, if we wore weave, we did, but we also didn't. And we still, we just look good. We're a beautiful group of women, seriously. You know, whether we wear it or not. Hello, hi, this is Cerebral. Oh, hey, how are you? Hello, hi. 
Thanks to uh, Gerald, Gerald Deshaun. You, um, I was the one who commented on one of your older videos about uh, the photos and everything. Oh my God! Oh my God! Okay, hello. <laughs> uh. Hey. Um, but you know, I really wanted to, you know, kind of keep it my um, yeah, because I'm a fan. I just wanted to keep mine short and sweet. Um, to be honest, I am not against plastic surgery. Um, within limits, I will say, because I um, I myself, um, I don't know if you've seen some of my other comments, but I am an openly gay man. Um, and I did suffer growing up um from body dysmorphia. So. Um, I have thought about getting plastic surgery and everything and first, you know, therapy. Hold on, that, excuse you know. me. Don't want to interrupt, but give me one second. Okay. You are an openly gay man and you said you suffer from body dysmorphia. Now I saw your picture and you seem like a skinny built guy. So <laughs> is the problem is you think you are too skinny or you're too big? Like give us more information of this. What is it? Well, um, I will say I don't necessarily suffer from it uh, as much anymore, but when I was growing up, yeah, I was, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I was a bad kid growing up, so, yeah. Um, but when I got into high school, that was when, um, of course, my body developed a little bit more, so, I, you know, I did have this whole uh, muscular slash, um, had a muscular look, and then um, when I was, like, 17, 18, uh, I began, like, um, print modeling and Runway modeling a little bit more, so I um, leaned my body out so that picture that you see. Okay, so you were big and you you started suffering from the dysmorphia and you lost all the weight. Um, yes. And is, that makes sense. And this is you still suffer from this? Not more so anymore. Uh, mostly, it's, um, mostly because I'm happy with what I am now. Um, but I will say that um, I did have a plastic surgery procedure. Um, it's not what most people think it is. I had a mastectomy. I, um, I suffered from gynecomastia. Um, a little kind of uh, wrap up what that is is um, during puberty, sometimes um, your hormones are all, obvious, all, me, obviously all over the place. So you develop um, extra breast tissue. So I had a procedure to, you know, get rid of it. That's the only plastic surgery procedure that I've had. Um, kind of, am I, you know, kind of running on a little bit? No. So, okay. So, the first question: You have had plastic surgery. Um, would you be willing to travel outside of the U.S. like they did for any kind of work? Uh, me personally, I don't think so. Simply because I've just heard too many horror stories. Um. When uh, there's a TV show, I don't know if it's still on, but uh, there was a TV show on E called Botch. And what I will say is that every single time I've seen those people on there, they've usually had surgery. Um, their initial surgery was from outside of the U.S., whether it's the Philippines or Brazil. Don't get me wrong, as you mentioned in your previous video, Brazil, um, you know, they have great plastic surgery, you know, some of them. Especially, um, I think you said for the trans, you have to have great plastic surgery. But overall, I do not think that I would travel up. It's just because I do believe that in America we do have some of the best uh, plastic surgeons, although it is more expensive. Um, but I feel like if that's the case, then it's just not meant for me to have, personally. Okay. So... You still are in the battle. You know, I heard when you have a eating disorder, it's a battle. On, it's like depression. It's on and off throughout your life. So, well, with the gay community, do a lot of the men in the gay community, I always notice a lot of them are really built. They look like the men straight women want, you know? We look at them because they look good. I mean, if they're not flamboyant. So, in your yeah. community, is their body shaming with gay men? Like, they won't choose you if you if you are a plus-sized man? Of course. Oh, my goodness. It is. And it's, it's kind of even worse when, uh, when it comes to men because, like, you know how straight men don't fetishize the bigger woman, you know, for sex? When you're, uh, when you're that big as a man, you are completely unwanted. 
like 100 percent like that there have been on dating profiles like um it's literally a thing to where they'll say no fats no feelings they don't want feminine gay men no not whatsoever hold on though aren't they tops or are they bottoms uh it's either or Literally. I'm confused. So if they are bottoms, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. If they are tops and they're supposedly masculine, I guess they're the real gay because they don't want a reminder of a woman. They want a man, man. It gets confusing, you know. Um, it, it confuses me as well. I'm not going to lie. Even with, you know, because me, I've always said, and I have uploaded the YouTube video in like a year, but I have some that I need to edit and put up. But in one of my videos, I was stating the fact that in the gay community, I don't realize why there's such thing at the top and bottom, simply because, you know, it just complicates everything. Um, well, I know someone who told me the gay men was upset because there weren't enough tops to go around. Everybody want to be a bottom. And I said, uh, I mean, like huh? I know this man. I'm sorry, um, I think that's more so Atlanta. Like, when I was in Atlanta, they told me, like, everybody was slim boy, and everybody was the bottom, everybody, you know, wanted to carry off purses and everything. And, I mean, if that's your thing, do your thing. But what I will say, personally, what I will say is that I have not seen a shortage of cops in the gay community, personally. <sighs> what I will say, um, really quickly, is that um, when you hear about, quote, unquote, straight men going gay, they're used to the bottom. They're not used to the tops. Well, this could be a whole nother video, but all right. <laughs> okay. I I just have found over the years, I've heard so many different things. People said they were born gay. I was born gay. Then it changed to, oh, I, I, all this different stuff. It's just a bunch of craziness going around. You know, I feel like if you are a real gay man, you don't sleep with women whatsoever. Okay. And if you are a real gay woman, you don't F with men. I see these gay women having babies now, one minute they with a man. It's just all this stuff. I, you know, mm. so. I, I, I'll be honest, you know, like I generally don't get the whole, um, even I think um, I saw a video with um, a is it okay if I mention another YouTuber? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, Kwame Brown recently did an interview with Judge Doug Brown, and he was saying um, in the interview that the LGBTQ, the LGBTQ community is um, kind of like a cult. And I was like, you know, I, I, I agree with that because it's like literally everywhere they're kind of like accept us. And I'm kind of like, you don't have to necessarily put your business on blast like that. I feel like it's me as a gay man. I kind of. I am just gay. That's just that's not my entire personality. That doesn't make me, you know, makes me act feminine or anything. That's just, you know, who I go home to. The outside now, world. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I just want to say oh. I do. I do stand my ground as a heterosexual and who believes in God. I am not calling nobody woman and girl who was not born such, and that is a I problem am. for some. And I, and I will be honest, I personally, I don't, I, I can't necessarily get the, especially this whole gender fluid thing, I can't necessarily get that either, when people are just kind of like, I want to be called they or us or we, or, you know. That damn Demi Lovato with her crazy self. Yeah, I, I personally, I, I can't get with it, um, even, um, you know, to be honest, I'm going to be respectful. Um, I'm not going to intentionally misgender you, but I'll just call you by your name. If you want to be called Tiffany, I'll call you Tiffany or uh, whatever. But I don't, I, I, I can't, I, I can't necessarily get with calling you she or he, um, simply because you want to. Mostly because I feel like, you know, okay, um, this is a kind of like off example, but I feel like if it was anything else, they would label it um, a mental disorder because I had um, an ex boss who she went to high school with the man who um, he was trying to sneak acid into the school. It was a wealthy school who was sneaking acid in that was a party that night instead of selling. And so he ended up trying to like, hide it in his clothes. 
body, so you know, ass was very strong. To this day, he thinks that he's a glass of orange juice. And, um, of course, he's in the mental hospital um, because of that. Problems with the rest of his life. But, as I was saying before, something like that, I feel like it, um, if there was anything that's been trans, it would be sending people to a mental hospital or something like that. So, I kind of do believe, and I'm trying not to be so gutter about it. I'm trying to be as politically correct as possible, but I don't necessarily believe that I obviously that I can't, you know, I, I can't call you the gender that you want me to. I, I'll call you the gender that, you know, you were born in. But I will call you whatever name, you know, like a nickname, I will call you whatever name you want me to. Just not your gender, because gender works me in the third thing. You know, you can't change the meaning of words per se, so that's what I would say about uh, how I feel about that. Okay. So you seem level headed and not a bully type or crazy or anything. So <laughs> I thank you for your call. Thank you. Also, all right. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. So. I am willing to take one more call. Have any of you ever had plastic surgery? Are you willing to go outside of this country for plastic surgery? Are you against plastic surgery? You know. Surgery is dangerous. It is a little scary. I, I've i seen on those shows the pain you go through when you wake up with them scars all sewn up, bruised up, feel like somebody beat you down. My goodness gracious. All right, so I'm going to end this. I just wanted to share this story. Be careful, ladies and gentlemen. If you're traveling for surgery, research your doctors thoroughly. Not only that, if it's a psychological issue you're going through where it's just something you can't accept or you've been struggling with it, seek therapy first before you decide to jump in and do that type of thing. You know, there is someone out there for all of us. If you have had trouble in the day. Oh, hold on. Okay, I'll take this call. And the dating department, you know, pray about it. God will send you someone. It's someone for everyone. I have seen people three foot feet foot tall get husbands and wives and stuff. Hello? Hello. Hi, this is Cerebral. Hi, this is Nikki. How are you? Fine. I'm so glad I caught this live and caught the tail end of it. I heard about the woman that died from the weight loss surgery. I'm a part of a few weight loss surgery groups on Facebook. And so um, we all heard about her and were shocked and saddened by it. I didn't hear about the other woman, though. So, yeah. Um, so but the mm -hmm. first thing I wanted to say was weight loss surgery wasn't cosmetic or plastic surgery. Um, okay. Well, that, the that, second thing I wanted to say is there are... There are a lot of very reputable and respectable doctors in Mexico. There are a ton of people who got weight loss surgery in Mexico because the prices here for paid out of pocket is just ridiculous. Or um, in a lot of cases, people didn't need to lose. They were just at, their BMI was just at the overweight category, and so they weren't approved, and so they go down and do it. And um, it's just a lot cheaper down there, but I... This paints a bad picture. There are a lot of great, like anything you have to do your research. And the same thing, when you have weight loss surgery and lose a lot of weight, you have to have what's called a paniectomy. That it's, it's kind of like a tummy tuck, but it's not. It's basically skin removal so you don't get rashes. Again, most insurances do not accept that unless you have a documentation of rashes mm -hmm. um, with, with your doctor. And then they'll only do that. 
you know, some people want to get their breasts lifted, some people want to get the skin off their arms or off their thighs. And so, again, they'll go to Mexico to get it done. Um, but it's not because they want to look better. It's because there's a lot of pain with the rashes, you know. And, yeah, I think part of it is they want to look better. They lost all that weight. And, you know, they want to get rid of the skin. It's uncomfortable. You want to look better in your clothes. It's an after effect of losing all weight. And um, I I am considering um, getting cut surgery for, like, my arms and my thighs just because I have had the surgery, weight loss surgery, and I wanted to get that off Okay. Me. Well, I'm not um, against it. So. You know. Like, if I were to lose yeah. weight, I would just want to work out. You know, working out, lifting those weights really tone up your um the skin, too, and the muscles. Yes, and that's a good way, too. Some people are older, and they are sliding into their 40s, 50s, and they don't want, you know, there's not many 400, 300-plus pound people walking around in their 60s and 70s. Some people are younger and realize that they need to change. And their mind is caught up that it might take some time for their body. I say if you have about 50, 60, 70 pounds to lose, you're good. If you have 100 pounds or more, if you're spreading around diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, it's a good alternative. I fought against it for a long time. I thought, oh, I could do it by myself. Um, the only thing I think isn't pushed enough, especially with weight loss surgery, is therapy. The first thing I did was find a good therapist. Um, to help me in my um, relationship with food. I don't think that part is pushed enough. But if you're physically ready um, for, and the changes your body goes through, I don't think this should be dismissed because a lot of people are, you know, when you go through this surgery, it's major surgery. This isn't a vanity project. You're literally cutting part of your stomach away. In a lot of cases, it's irreversible. And so you can only eat a certain amount of ounces a day. Another misconception is that if this only procedure really only lasts about a year or two, if you don't change your eating habits, you will regain. Most people who have this surgery are ready to change. And we, in the weight loss community, we call it a tool. You don't have to use your tool. Um, so, you know, if, and it's hard to explain Especially, and I belong to a group of people who are 400 pounds plus, and we all know how differently society treats you. There's a lot of untreated trauma as well. Um, so it's not something just to be dismissed. And if everybody could just lose weight and have a calorie deficit, then we wouldn't need the weight loss surgery, right? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people that are very successful with this. It's changed their lives. It's changed my life. And so it, it's it's still on the fringes. That's why a lot of people don't tell people. Um, they say things like, oh, it's the easy way out and all ridiculous stuff. And number one, I'm practicing my own business in 2021. And two, if you don't have this particular issue, to be dismissive about it is so cruel, um, especially to the people who are trying to change. With yeah. loss, you know, I, I went to the gym with my mom once. You know, how many Big people have been asked if they've been women, especially if they're pregnant. The way society treats that people is ridiculous. So if somebody wants to have a weight off surgery, then mind your business. And if you can't be supportive about it, just keep your opinion to yourself. You, you know, know um, I, I'm not 400 or 600, but I've struggled even like what, since I was a teenager losing weight. I've lost weight, gained weight. People, is this shit is hard. It's hard. Yeah, it is. You know. It is. But I think when you get past a certain size, it's other something else is going on. You know, for me, I used food as comfort. I wasn't thinking about my what I was thinking about. A therapist helped me line up my thoughts so I could, before I got to the cheesesteak, because I'm in Philly, you know, before I got to the cheesesteak, I get to, oh, I need a cheesesteak. That part needs to be broken down. So I try to advocate for therapy because, when you get to that point, you're not even thinking about it. You're not even thinking about it. You just go. You just eat. You eat whatever you want, when you want. Um, it's almost like a reflex. 
Yeah. So were you an so, uh, emotional eater? You know, when you get to that size, it's a psychological thing that needs to be broken through. And I find that many people don't do that work beforehand. You know, they're the type that will, you know, they take a picture like, can I have this? And it's a picture of mac and cheese. And they, I'm, I'm eight days post out and everybody's like, no, you can't have that. Like, what the hell are you doing? You know? But for every one person like that, it's another 20 posts that are like, I can cross my legs for the first time. I could go on a ride or walk with my kids for the first time. My husband can pick me up. You know, I got a promotion at work after I lost 100 pounds. When you have that kind of result, you just can't, you just can't dismiss that. You know, that's, that's important to people. It's changed their lives and their families' lives. Um, so, that's all. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. All I right. love your show. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. You know, I've seen all this body positivity stuff. And I think it's a great thing because sometimes there are people bigger than you that don't even eat as much as you. It's genetic sometimes, the metabolism. But there are some cases where, listen, I can't promote being very large because, I mean, I'm not very large. I got diabetes, which can be reversed, but still, it's a lot of health problems that come with, with that from trying to get pregnant, all types of stuff. It can be difficult. Not only that, wanting to travel, um, clothing, not having available clothing offered to you. It never fits right and stuff, all types of stuff. So people can't judge, you know, people who want to get surgery to lose weight and everything like that. You know, I do recommend, you know, I do recommend trying to do it the natural the natural way if you can try that don't give up you know save up the money on the side while you're trying to do this you know try it yourself you know the best way you can hello hey cerebral it's dr woman how are you hi i'm fine how are you I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad you're doing this topic. Thank you. Thank you. So what's your opinion about all of this? Um, well, I don't think people should be shamed for having the surgery. I really don't. Um, sometimes uh, it is trauma. Um, you know, let's not pretend that the black community is daffodils and rainbows. Okay. Um, and a lot of people eat out of stress, coping with their environment. So, you know, for all of the men, they're like, oh, why don't you do it naturally? No, we need better communities, okay, so that people don't eat, you know, from stress and trauma. Um, also, a lot of black people live in food deserts. So, you know, where they can't get apples, access to apples and spinach and fresh produce, okay, that's just, you know, hey, for any entrepreneurs in the chat, yeah, why don't you um, start opening up fruit stands in the black community? Um, that 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 would help some of this. But yeah, I don't I don't agree with shaming people who want the surgery. I don't. But it also has to be a change in culture. I know I might ruffle some feathers, but this is a cultural problem too. I mean, yes, it is. Black people don't talk about eating healthy and. We, you know, we, we like soul food and soul food can be good. You can still change up a little bit of uh, some of the stuff you put in there, but you know, running six o'clock in the morning, eating, um, salads every day and stuff. That's not always, maybe for black women who have careers in California, trying to be an actor and models and stuff and those type of places, you see them more in shape because, you know, they're trying to become stars and stuff, but it culturally, it has to become a part of Black people's culture to promote healthy eating and stuff like that. And, it does. you know, it's a mental thing. You know, when you see these young girls eating healthy, that's a lot of times they've uh -huh. been trained that way. Their mamas eat healthy. So for them, eating that way is regular life because that's how they're raised. Correct. You know? Correct. Um, 
I will tell you that my mom, she struggled losing the baby weight um, after my baby sibling, right? But she did eventually lose it. And, you know, she would play with us. She'd run with us. You know, there was just some lifestyle changes that she made, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the pushback, I agree with the culture. The pushback is... um, (laughs) I had a I had a friend that dated a big dude and um she was trying to eat healthy and he's just like, Oh, well I don't like that rabbit food. Mm-hmm. Okay, but you know, you're like a cheeseburger away from a heart attack, sweetheart. Is it really rabbit food? You know? So this is a black man saying this. Okay. So keep and keep in mind, we're not we're not the only ones that ha- suffer from weight. You know, there are a lot of black men who are obese too. Oh yeah. And overweight. Let's keep it let's 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 please not let's just limit this to to black women. And um you'd be surprised that a number of black men get weight loss surgery. Once they seriously, they yeah. get weight loss surgery. So let's not let's not let's not make this a woman thing. Um but I would recommend um a reconstructive surgeon and here's why I say that. So there are people who are maybe maybe they need to lose a hundred pounds or less, right? Mm-hmm. Perhaps um hire a personal trainer. Um you know, uh if you can get it um uh, billed as a as physical therapy, that's better because that's a medical expense, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then have a tummy tuck or, you know, remove the skin from whatever body part. Some people get their uh, arms reduced. Some people get their thighs reduced. Some people get the tummy, tummy tuck. It just involves moving skin and replacing skin. So that's more reconstructive surgery. It is still plastic surgery, but it's reconstructive surgery. And that's kind of the skill set you want to look for when choosing a doctor is the reconstructive surgery. Okay. And I say this because um, I I have a I am blessed enough to have a personal trainer, and I have oh yeah. Oh my um, god. Okay. That's how I maintain. That's how I maintain my my uh, shape, and uh, because I because you know as every ten years your workout needs to change. You know, what works for you in your 20s doesn't work for you in your 30s, does not work for you in your 40s or 50s, okay? And depending on hormonal changes and such, whether you've had a pregnancy or maybe you've had a miscarriage, you know, that 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 has a lot to do with it as well. Um, you went for the women going through menopause, you might want to switch it up and get a, a personal trainer, you know, maybe to help you out. Like, if you can't afford, you know, you don't have to do it every day, but maybe you can do it two days a week. Maybe you can do it three. Maybe you only do it once. Who knows? You know, if you cannot do one-on-one, you can do a small group. You know, there's many options. There's many options. But what I've seen with the personal trainer that I use is that their clients, oh, my God. Like, they'll lose all this weight, and then they'll have all the loose skin. And then they go to a really great plastic surgeon right here in the Midwest. And the thing is, is that you can get financing for plastic surgery. Now, I, I, I don't know, like, I think your credit score has to be kind of decent, but you can, you can get plastic, you know, you can, you can get uh, financing, medical financing. You can ask your doctor about that because that's okay. how other groups in America are getting the plastic surgery. Everyone doesn't have the money right away. They'll get financing for it. All and right. it's easier to get financing for it if you have loose skin because you've lost the weight. So um, I heard with um, if you work for the government um, and you've lost weight and you need a tummy tuck, uh, you can get it. Okay. So and you can get it billed. You can get it billed where the insurance pays it. You know, pays it. So. So you know, and yes, you need to have a history of rashes and or whatever, or, or or infections with skin infections. But keep those records. You know, keep those records. You know, go to a dermatologist, go to your general practitioner, and if you keep getting, you know, creams or any kind of, uh, you know, thing for your rashes, yeah, it's time to go get the, you know, tummy tuck or get or skin reduction. 
So you have a trainer. Now what about your meals? Do you meal prep or what what do you what do you eat to stay healthy? I mostly eat fish. So I mostly eat fish. Um I, I would say I'm a pescatarian, but not completely. Um I still eat a tiny amount of lamb and a tiny amount of chicken. Um, but for the most part I am, you know, mostly fish. Um, I'll do meatless meals. Uh, I'm I'm not vegan with my meatless meals. I'll do lacto ovo vegetarian meals. Um, so that's that's one thing. Um, because I you know I am Gen X and I'm over forty. Um, I tend to stay away from gluten. So I don't eat bread. I don't eat pasta. If I choose to eat those, they're only like maybe during the holidays or maybe like, you know, maybe once a week, you know, I like pizza, you know, it's like, okay, I'll do that. But, you know, um, I, I make sure that I stay away from gluten um, because a lot of us, too much flour in your diet, that's going to, that's going to get, um, bring you off balance hormonally. Mm-hmm. So, you know, gluten is not necessarily the best thing for people, you know, so you might want to consider that. Um, I try, if I, if I go out, I'll try gluten-free options um, to see. Um, I do, there are gluten-free, oh goodness, um, Trader Joe's has these gluten-free cauliflower rounds that you can substitute as buns. They're very good. Okay. Yeah, they're very, very good. Um, I use cheese wraps uh, instead of bread. Um, you know, like I said, I, you know, and then a lot of the bread has GMOs here. Now, when I travel abroad, I'm, you know, I will do the croissants and the bread, you know, every now and then I have a croissant, you know, but like, it's not, it's gotten to the point cerebral where I don't even like, like, I don't even crave it. Cause I used to eat a lot of bread when I was a child, you know, but I don't, I don't even crave it like that, but that's how I keep, that's how I keep slim. That's how I keep, you know, and there are really good doctors in Chicago. They're very good doctors in Chicago, but I want the ladies, and there are a couple good doctors in Texas, I want the ladies to explore financing the surgery, you know? Better for you to pay for um, a surgeon that has several board certifications that is also a reconstructive surgeon, okay? Um, because at least that way you know you're, you are safe. No surgery, you know, I mean, it's not... You know, of course, you take a risk because of surgery, but um, if you can avoid, you know, uh, if you can just get the skin removed, um, once you once you lose the weight, then that's fine. Now, if you have more than 100 pounds to lose, then yes, you might want to consider the gastric sleeve. But again, you know, get it done here. Okay. You know, okay. get it done here. Or maybe get it done in a state that's cheaper. You know, it, it, it just depends. You know, it just depends on, on, on your journey. You know, yes. the, the young lady called before, she's just like, yeah, you know, there, she belonged to a group where people were over 300 and 400 pounds. Okay, I get that. They they more than likely have to do the surgery, do the do the, um, the gastric sleeve. You know, okay. that's perfectly... Why would I, why would I, why would I tell them, oh no, just do it naturally. It's just like, no, you know, but at the same time, once you get the gastric sleeve, you, you do, your lifestyle does have to change. Uh, a woman said, get a therapist. I do agree with that, especially when you are morbidly obese that way. You know what else? I, I would, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not trying to right. sound mean because I know some people might think this sound messed up, but I used to say to myself. When I watch them shows, my 600 pound life and all this stuff, and I see these mm-hmm. people's their their relatives and friends and family bringing them food, I said to myself, arrest them damn people. That person is about to have a damn heart attack. You can't even move anyway. Go make a salad and let them cry, throw a fit, and they can't do nothing. Just keep feeding them a salad every day, okay? Now eventually they can get something else but seriously they're they're literally about to have a heart attack and here you go bringing ice cream up and five mcdonald meals and then you on tv complaining exactly. about them being 600 damn pounds shoot exactly i mean you you really have to get away from people who do that and there are people who will try to sabotage you yes there are so it also um 
Um, it, it means changing your diet. Sometimes it means changing your friend circle. Sometimes it means not hanging out with certain relatives. I mean, you do what you have to do. You do what you have to do. You know, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't shame, I don't shame those people. I mean, I've never, I've never been that size. You know, I've never been that size. So, like, why would I shame those people? You know, what I want them to do is, is choose the best doctor and choose the healthiest. And yeah, you know, maybe finance it here in the states. You know, because I want them to be alive. And you know, if there are any complications, you know, we have a decent hospital system here. You know, but yeah, you know, why? I mean, why not? Why not? But I, I really, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's gonna, I, I know a woman who went to Mexico to get the surgery. Um, I don't remember the name of the doctor cause I don't pry, but, um, so far everything's okay. Um, and she didn't get lipo. She just got the sleeve and, um, she might have had a hundred. She had a hundred pounds to lose. She was she, she was just maybe just over a hundred pounds to lose. Okay. And um, she's lost it, and she's happy, and she is. Uh, I don't know. I don't think she's in therapy right now. Although I've talked about it with her, and I think she should be in therapy. Uh, but her life has improved. So, I mean, I would be remiss to you know, criticize somebody like that. When I lost some weight, I felt happy because the clothes fit better. It fit better. Right. Every, it just looks right. better. So, you have more options, too, with clothing you can wear. So You do. I um, love it. I've done, I've done Weight Watchers before because I had um, an amount of weight, you know, a small amount of weight to lose. And it was just, it was just stubborn. It, was just, it just wouldn't come off. Like 35, 40 pounds. You know, it was just stubborn. I'm like, okay. And, it, and that worked for me. You know, that worked for me. But I also had to change my workout because I was getting older. And so I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe this doesn't work anymore. Let me try this. All right. You know, so it depends on how much you have to lose, what age you are, and, um, you know, just kind of what's going on hormonally with you, you know? Yes. I and agree. also, um, you know that gluten isn't isn't the best. You know, I don't. My diet is um, is is more simple carbs as opposed to complex carbs. Um, I eat beans uh, every now and then. I'll eat rice, but I'm like you. I eat the rice cauliflower. You know, but if I do have rice, I'll have like rice and beans and, and no. such, and then I'll um, you know I'll I'll portion that out. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Now let me ask you this: this whole gluten yes. stuff, this gluten thing, is kind of new. All these products, no gluten. How did you know you were allergic to, or gluten wasn't any good? What, what kind of signs and symptoms did you know? Um, it, I'm trying to think. Like, um, mucus. A lot of mucus in my system. Um, um, I'm trying to think what else. What was, what was, oh, God, let me think. The, the, I, I do remember the mucus. I remember also the the high carbs, and I remember um, oh oh also I had a nutritionist too. I had a nutritionist um, that suggested that as well. Um, so to try it, you know, just to see, you know, to say, hey, okay, why don't why don't you try this? And it worked, you know, it worked. So I don't do. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't eat bread. You know, I don't like I used to. I, I just don't. You know what I mean? Um, and it's, it's easier. It seems like oat flour, almond flour, uh, amaranth flour. Um, that's another one. Um, there's this keto flour that's out um, that contains no gluten. Okay. It, see, it seems that that works for me. Okay. Um, there's a. You said you like almond flour, cerebral? Um, oat flour. Oat flour, okay. Uh, there is an almond flour cake mix that's out that's pretty good. Um, by Simple Mills, those are good. Uh, oat flour, you know, you can do a lot with oat flour. You can do pan oat flour pancakes, you know. Mm. Those mm -hmm. are really good. There's a, a WNBA player. Uh, if you look up, she's the uh, association president, the WNBA 
Players Association president. She did like a coconut flour pancake or something like that. Dang. You know, it's really, really good. And you can just make a batch and just put it in the refrigerator, you know? It's so much out now. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. When I was younger, yeah. which wasn't that long ago, but it, it wasn't stuff out like what it is now. All this healthy stuff and these substitutes, it's amazing. Right. You know, I eat pasta zero. They sell that at Walmart instead of, um, you know, regular spaghetti or skinny pastas made out of um, something from Japan, yam or um, some type of. Is it the white yam from yeah. Japan? Is that it? Yes, kojic or konjic or some type of yams, something, but it's really healthy. Spell it, honey. Um, Spell it. It I, I don't K-O-K? know. It starts with a K. Um, okay. But just look up Pasta Zero. And I'm, pasta they, zero. It'll, it'll be on the information, but I know it's healthy. It's not real pasta. It's completely healthy. That works for you? Oh, and yes. That's great. It's so good. That's great. That's great. What you want to do is you want to keep a balance of, you want to have more protein. I think we had talked about bone broth our last conversation. Yes. Hold on. And the remember? chat, and the chat is called Conjac. Conjac, Conjac. K- oh, okay. K-O-N-J-A-C. Okay. Oh, that's what I'm okay. Try that. Now you said we were talking about Botox, you said? No, bone broth. Oh, bone broth. Okay. Bone broth as 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 a as something to eat, you know that that's a good protein. That's a good that's a good protein um, a way to get your protein, you know. So have that with your lunch, or you have it for breakfast, you know. But uh, try to do bone broth for lunch, you know. That that I'm t- I'm telling you, I have seen I have seen I have seen just increasing my protein. I have seen changes. I've seen changes. Because, you know, you get to, sometimes, depending on what time of the year it is, you know, you might gain a few pounds, especially because I don't, I don't, I live in the north. So, you know, I do exercise in the winter, but it's just this winter I was busy. Last winter I was jogging in the wintertime. It was great. So I didn't do that as much, you know. Um, but, yeah, like, I realized adding a little more protein to my, to my diet, it, it just, I, those pounds came off. And that, that does not happen right away for somebody my age. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, so protein, protein, protein. I would, yes. I would definitely, I definitely recommend protein, protein, protein. And what's so great is that the woman I know that had the weight loss surgery, she blogs about her experience. Um, and it's great because she's eating a lot of the stuff that I eat or that my physical therapist, uh, personal trainer, I'm sorry, she's also a physical therapist, uh, recommends, you know, and it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. I love it when people take charge of their health. I do. I love yeah. when people take charge of their health. When you're ready to make that decision, yeah. you do it, you know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, but you know, try to stay in, in the country and maybe finance you know, f- finance surgery. So, you know, and you just got to think about it. It's like paying, you know, you're, you're your own temple. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you pay for that? You know, you pay your mortgage, you pay your rent. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you pay for that? That's yeah, true. You know, so, so, but yeah, but Cerebro, I'm going to let you go. Thank you but, so um, you much. Holiday. I love it when you call, yeah, my sure. God. Thank you so much. Oh, anytime. All anytime, right. anytime I can spread kind of positivity and information. Yes. That would be great. Thank you so much Thank for the you. Pop Zero reference. Yes. I okay. I have a video I just did um showing what I eat, the healthy things I eat. Check that out. I, I just saw, I just you know did what? it. I haven't finished it. I saw that and I've gotta look at it. Thank you. I will. Right. Okay. Thank you. I most definitely will. All, All right. right. Have a great one. You too. Bye. Mm-hmm. Bye now. Oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> okay. So, yes, y'all, I'm reading in here. Yes, sometimes people will try to sabotage you. You know, I've heard stories of women where both friends are, are plus size and one starts to lose weight and then the friendship goes down because she feels left behind or gets jealous because maybe she's getting attention now from men and she's still plus size. It's I'm telling you. Once you make the decision for yourself, you make it. But I think it probably is fun when you have a your friend doing it with you. Like you both decide to do it together. 
I mean, I'm sure it's really fun, but I don't know. You're not always there to see if they're really eating healthy to monitor them. But it's great, you know, you have the support system and you both do it together. But if you can't, you know, I will definitely, I have a few videos focused on health and I think I'll have more in the very near future. Okay, I just shared a video, either it was yesterday or the day before yesterday of um, showing you some of the healthy things I eat. Check that out on my page. And I thank you all for your calls. Ladies and men, be careful. Research the doctor. Try to do things naturally before you know you decide to do that. If you need therapy, do that and pray about everything. So thank you so much, everybody. I'll be talking to y'all very soon this week. I'm sharing some tips about something. Bye, y'all. Oh, and thank you, Marie, Marie Blake, for the donation. Thank you. Bye.